All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching today's program. My name is Renee, and I'm a program specialist at uh, Girl Scout Spirit of Nebraska. And uh, we hope you're all healthy and that you are wearing a mask and washing your hands and staying safe. Um, today, we're going to be talking about global Girl Scouting, and we've done that a lot this week. And today, to kind of wrap up our global theme, we're going to talk to Ajwa. She works for Girl Scouts of the USA, and she's their director of global Girl Scouting. So we're going to just learn about global Girl Scouting, um, different things related to like how you can participate, and just learn a lot about our big Girl Scout sisterhood all over the world, and I'm very excited. So. Uh, hi, Adwa. <laughs> How are you today? Hi, Renee. Thanks so much for having me on today. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about your, your job and a little bit about yourself to get before we get started? Sure. So I'm Adwa and I am Senior Director of Global Girl Scouting. I've been working for GSUSA for just a little over, I think, 11 years now. So I um, had a really great time. All of my work has always been in the global department. Um, and that means that I lead a small team that is responsible for integrating global throughout um, the work that happens at GSUSA, helping to develop global program content and opportunities and experiences for girls. Um, and then also managing our relationships and partnerships with different global organizations, but specifically with our World Association and um, the member org the other 149 member organizations of WEX. Okay, so what have you got on the screen here? So this is a great picture of what our global movement looks like. So we are, as I men mentioned before, a part of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. Um, and WAGS has 150 countries, including Jewish USA, who are part of it. So there's girl guiding and girl scouting all around the world. And we are lucky to be one of those members. Um, and in addition to that, and as we talked about Jewish USA, we have our global girl scouting team, which is the work that I do um, with my small team. And then there's USA Girl Scouts Overseas. And USA Girl Scouts Overseas is often referred to as our 111th council. And they are in over 90 countries around the world and they deliver our Girl Scout programming to American girls who happen to live abroad. So they are daughters of military or their parents are working for companies um, that are, happen to be stations around, around the world. And we have two big locations on military bases um, in Japan and Korea, as well as in Italy. So, um, yeah, USA, that's our, what our global movement looks like for Girl Scouts. And then, of course, we are members of WAGS. Okay. Um, so. I wanted to show the map. Yeah, let's see the map. So these are so USA a, GSOs? This is, our, this is the WAGS member organizations. Oh, okay. um, I forgot the one that kind of showed the overlapping map. But this is um, the map of all the different countries where um, Girl Guides and Girl Scouts um, exist in the world. So you can see we um, cover a pretty good breadth of the global, of the global map here. Oh. Uh, and so what does your work entail with WAGS? Like how do you, how do you work with WAGS and what does that work look like? Yeah, so um, I work with the World Bureau, which is based in London, in addition to also partnering or finding ways to partner with all the other member organizations. So how do we work with WAGS? Um, a couple of different ways. Some of it has to do with programming. So you guys know every single year in February, we celebrate World Thinking Day. And so WAGS actually sets the theme for World Thinking Day every year so that we can all recognize the global sisterhood that we belong to. Um, and then we use that to develop our World Thinking Day programming. We also partner with WAGS in other events and initiatives that we do with for young women. So one of the things we did this year was something called the Juliet Lowe Seminar, and it's a leadership seminar that WAGS has been putting on for, I believe, for over 75 years, which is, of course, named after our founder, and it brings leader um, young women from all across um, the WAGS movement together to 
spend about a week together doing leadership skills. And this year, they did, a, a, they did the same event, but um, slightly different where they actually held a simultaneous event in 18 different locations around the world. And we hosted one of them at Edith Macy. So we had about 35 to 40 young women from I believe 12 to 15 different countries with us for the week. Um, and we also had a great chance using um, social media as well as technology like Zoom to connect with um, other sites all, um, all around the world. So, we do things like that. Um, we also work with WAGS on a regional basis. So WAGS has five regions. I'm going to go back here. Um, you'll see right here on the screen where the five different colors are in the right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Those are the five regions of WAGS. Um, and we belong to the Western Hemisphere, that big orange area over there. Um, so we also work with them with the, our regional team um, as well. And um, they also help support us in how we engage with different member organizations. So yeah, and I should talk about just really quickly. So there's the Western Hemisphere region that we belong to. There's the Europe region. There is the Arab region. There's Africa region. And then there's Asia Pacific. So those are the five regions. What are some examples of ways you've collaborated with other member organizations, either within our own um, region or other regions? Yeah, so one of the ways um, we were hoping to work on it, we're still working on now, is I think may, many councils may have heard of that we were going to be having the Global Roundtable, and that was going to be at Girl 2020, a convention this year. Um, that shifted a little bit, but as part of that, we did a hosting program where we paired our local councils with member organizations, and we had about um, 60 um, member organizations who were going to be coming to that event paired with, um, I think, about 45 councils um, in the U.S. So since about February, once every few months, um, girls and young women from those councils and those member organizations have been coming together um, and meeting and interacting. So we're really excited about that. And even though we are not able to all meet in Orlando, we are going to be having a virtual kickoff event at some time in the fall. So um, watch out for that. That's well, that's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, so what other, what other type of um, globally themed programs does GSUSA work on? Um, yeah, so there's quite a few. So we do, we talked about World Thinking Day. We also have the Global Action Award that we release every single year. And you can find that on girlscouts.org in the Think Globally section of the girls page. Um, we also, um, last week, launched um, I think there's a few different global programs on Girl Scouts at Home that you can go find right now. Um, and then there, one of the other big things that we do every single year is we, part of our work has to do with doing global advocacy. So we do work at the United Nations since we're luckily, lucky enough to be um, uh, situated here in New York City. Um, and so we are, we take a group of anywhere from 12 to 16 girls to an event that happens every March in um, New York called the Commission on the Status of Women, um, where they kind of talk about what is the state of women around the world. And so um, th that's uh, a really cool part of our work that we do. And this year, we're actually going to be taking a group of girls from Spirit of Nebraska. Um, and unfortunately, yeah. didn't get to go, but it's OK. We're, we're going to figure out, hopefully, we'll figure out um, other opportunities. Yeah, um, we, um, we did a program with them yesterday, so they got to share oh, a little right. bit about their experience and what they're working on now. So nice. hopefully we'll see a lot from them in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be good too. Uh, um, yeah. I'm trying to think, of, uh, sorry, I was just trying to think. So um, we also, um, we have a program, we've talked about, G so G JLS and those other leadership opportunities that happen for, for young women. We also do a lot of work with our world centers. Um, and so I can show you a great part of that. One of the benefits of being part of WAGS is that we also have these amazing five world centers that we can go visit all around the world. Unfortunately, we're not visiting right now, but hopefully when uh, things turn around, um, we can, that's something we can go do. But um, so we have Arcabana, which is in Mexico, Pax Lodge, which is based in London, right next to the WAGS World Bureau. Um, 
Arshale, which is the very first world center, which is based in Edelbad in Switzerland, and then um, Sangam, which is in Pune, India. And then the newest world center, which has only been around for about seven years, I believe, is Kusafiri, which is based in Africa. And Kusafiri is different because it doesn't have a physical location, but it rotates throughout the Africa region with member organizations and different programs. So the next one they actually had is going to be a visit, I believe, in summer 2021, knock on wood, that it goes through with the Ghana Girl Guide. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, yeah. And we had a program yesterday um, teaching, we're talking all about those and tips on how to travel to them. And it was really, really fantastic. So anyone oh, awesome. can check that out to learn more about traveling to world centers. Um, so can you share a couple of really cool experiences you've had because of Global Girl Scouting? Yeah, um, I've kind of been really lucky. I think one of my favorite experiences that I had was in 2012 when we were celebrating our centenary, we hosted um, the Girls World Forum. WAG started the celebration of their 100th anniversary in 2010, and they celebrated for that full triennium. And so they had these young women's forums every single year, and it ended with us with the Girls World Forum. And we had about, I think, over 600 girls um, and young women from about 100 countries come and meet for a week-long event in Chicago. So that was really exciting. And I still meet um, you know, young members now and young alumni who are like, who tell us that they were at Girls World Forum and what a transformative experience it was for them. So that's been really exciting. Um, I mentioned the work that we do at the UN. That's always a highlight of the year for us in that engagement. Um, we, we spend almost four months preparing for it in terms of working with the girls and then we get there for a pretty hectic week. Um, but it's always really exciting and impactful. Um, and then I've also been fortunate enough to be able to do some, some traveling. Um, WAG, similar to Girl Scouts, has, works off of a triennium system. So every three years, we go to world conference. Um, and then the year before that, we go to regional conference. So that's always exciting, again, to come together with the full sisterhood and get an understanding of what's happening um, all around the world and how we're going to work together for the next three years. Yeah, I think for a lot of girls um, and adults, like when you are able to make those connections and meet people and come together, that's some of the most meaningful experiences. Even um, when we participated in the Helen Starro seminar a couple of years ago, oh, yeah. um, it was a one day program, but we did a video call with girl guides in Libya. And it was pretty oh, cool. short, but... Um, it, it worked for the most part and we got to talk with them and all the girls who attended that said it was the their favorite part of the program was being able to connect with girl guides overseas so i that's um you know there it's possible to connect with girl scouts across the world technologically um, but for people who maybe can't travel um how do you recommend that they participate in global girl scouting because you don't have to travel so you do not have to travel to get a global experience. So technology, of course, as Renee, Renee, you were mentioning, is a great way to kind of make those connections. And we're gonna be working, especially in the next few months, to try to bring some of those connections um, to our members for cool. consistently. And before we wrap up, I'll tell you about um, the tour. We have, we're gonna be hosting a tour of the World Centers the week of March 18th. Um, so you'll get to go and visit each of them and get to have a little bit of a taste of what it would be like to go there with some activities and experiences. But um, again, also we have our great program content um, on if you are engaged in or you're a troop leader and you're engaged in the volunteer toolkit, we have a great piece that we started last year where you can, it's called the global button. We haven't done it through all, all of the programming yet, but um, it's going to get there. Um, where you can click on that global button and figure out how to take your program and put a global spin on it and a global connection to it. You can also um, look at doing that at your own councils and integrating um, global through the programs you do, reaching out to the communities that you have in your, in your backyard, learning about them. And I bet you, for the most part, you can probably find out that there's a Girl Guide or Girl Scout um, member organization 
from those communities as well that, that, that as well that you can probably try to um, learn about. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, what else did I want to ask? So I guess what, um, why do you think Global Girl Scouting is important? I mean, I know it's your job and everything, but mm -hmm. so what's your little, what's your speech there on, on why it's so important for Girl Scouts? Um, well, I think one of the first things that we, that's always important about Girl Scouts is that, you know, Girl Guiding and Girl Scouting started over a hundred years ago in the United Kingdom. Julia Gordon Lowe learned about this amazing organization when she happened to be living in England. She started three troops there, um, two in the, in the UK and London and one in Scotland before she decided that it was too amazing um, of an opportunity for girls not to come home and start it and bring it to girls here. Um, and so that really means that we have been global since our inception. Since the very beginning, Girl Scouts has been global. And Julia Gordon Lowe thought that that was one of the things that made this opportunity and experience for leadership so great um, is that global sisterhood and that global connection. Um, and, you know, if you think about the fact that she, she recognized that over 100 years ago, and today it's even more important to have those connections. We are all connected um, and we are all interconnected. Um, and so having understanding how to have um, a global mindset, um, being able to make those connections and um, engage with people across cultures and language wherever you happen to be, whether it's for folks in your community or folks who live on the other side of the world, those are important and key skill sets to have. Um, and much of our programming, you know, are, is there to give girls that. Um, and that's why I think it's, it's, it's important. Um, and for me, it's one of the best parts of my job. Yes, agreed. I the same way. I love working with Global Girl Scouting. Um, so what is, what do you like about your job? I mean, I know that possibly a little overlapping there, but um, what is it about your job that you like, or even um, like the parts of your job, like travel? Um, what about your job is enjoyable to you? Um, I, I do. I mean, it is a little overlapping in the sense that I really do like giving, having girls have these opportunities for connections, but also just understanding what's happening in our world. I think it's so important for us to um, know what's happening where we live and how that connects to what's happening somewhere else. Um, and it, it, it's just, you know, and some, as somebody who, um, you know, is a first generation American, but also loves to travel and has been able to have amazing global opportunities both here in the U.S. as well as in having lived in other parts of the world. I know how impactful that can be. Um, and so having the opportunity to create experiences and programming to give that to girls is one of the things I really like about my job. Yeah. Cool. That's great. It sounds like a pretty great job. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that's about it for now. Um, I, oh, I was going to pull up a, there is a calendar on the Girl Scouts, um, yeah. Girl Scouts at home. Um, and mm -hmm. I've been trying to show that uh, from time to time so girls could see what's coming up. So you know there are some programs with USA GSO girls this weekend um, that yep. anyone can sign up for. And then there's the upcoming tours of the World Centers. You can check those out. And these will all be through GSUSA's website, right? You have to sign up that way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, if I can make a plug for the USA GSO event. So there'll be one, I think, this afternoon and then another one tomorrow afternoon. And you'll get to talk to the USA Girl Scouts overseas and how this experience has been for them. One of them, I believe, is going to be from Italy. So um, that'll be interesting to see as they kind of maneuver through, um, you know, this unfortunate crisis we're in. Um, and then the other, I think, is coming from Hong Kong um, or maybe in Shanghai, China. But um, go check it out, the USA, USA GSO and all the great things that those girls are doing and how they are managing in this crisis and um, yeah, how it connects and relates to what's happening in your backyard as well. And then of course, hopefully come join us the week of um, May 18th to get a tour of our five world centers and just watch out for the other global programs that are gonna be coming throughout the summer.
Yeah, there's always something cool going on. So you just got to look around and pay attention. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for coming along with us today, Aja. It was great to have you. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks so much, Renee. Yeah.